go. We're about to be rolling. Hello everyone, welcome to Ties vs. Dies. So, today we are going to be bringing you another Mandela Madness and Broken Spine Hourglass Spine with trip style sleeves and trip style body for the rest of the shirt. And so right here you can see me doing the initial mirror fold and I wanted to showcase how you do your typical fan fold and this is going to be used pretty much throughout the duration of this video whenever I say fan fold and whenever anyone says fan fold this is what they mean for that matter it's when you fold the shirt in equal increments as if it was a fan like a hand fan and that's what you see me doing right here and keep in mind a damp shirt typically works best so that's what you want to try to aim for that's what we're using here and that's why the shirt is just staying to the molded uh, form that we're doing. And so I'm going to break down this uh, same shirt because we're not actually going to start binding it here. We're just giving a little demonstration. Um, so for the first part of this, we're getting into the eightfold Mandela. And that is a Mandela that is folded into eight equal increments, all pointed towards the center. And right here we go we are going with the washable marker to give us a starting point for the mandela and as you see here you just take that uh, bottom half and you fold it into a triangle shape with the center of piece touching your washable marker point and Notice here, you can see the two different camera angles uh, from the top view and then the front view. Um, this is so that way you can differentiate what's going on a little bit easier. And so right here, we have the eight equal folds. And I'm just going back through right here and touching them up, making sure that they're all equal size, make sure none of the folds are uneven. And so that's perfectly okay to do. That's uh, encouraged actually that way you have a finished product that is what you want it to be and so now let's get into binding the mandala and so after we've done the fold you want to go ahead and either use rubber bands or whatever you're using to bind your shirt I'm using floss right here um, I really think that the floss is a good way to go for your initial bind it's easy to work with it's very strong it's very sturdy and it binds very well but it also leaves a lot of absorption capabilities when you're going to get into your dye application which is very important and so you want to start that initial bind off with a good 45 degree angle and this is going to be your starting and stopping point for your mandala so you want to go pretty heavy on this initial um, and on this initial bind so whether you're using rubber bands or floss you want to go heavy on it and we're going to actually go over this uh, with some sinew towards the end. And so we're not overly too concerned with binding it too heavy. But then we want to always get those 45 degree angles and those turns as thick as possible while still maintaining the shape. That way there will be a solid and noticeable start and stop point of separation for when the dye actually is applied because it's a resistance technique that means wherever we are going to be having our uh, our line, our bind, rubber band, floss, sinew, what have you, that is going to resist the dye. And so there will leave, be um, blank shirt still wherever you put down your binding. And so keep that in mind. That's something that you want to kind of uh, have in the back of your mind. So that's what we're actually doing here. And just to be a little bit more, to have a little bit better understanding of what it is we're trying to accomplish, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Wherever we bind the shirt, that's where the dye is going to resist and leave an open space. And so it'll be a cool separation when you go pretty heavy on those binds. And again, another reason for the floss is it leaves the shirt a nice spongy consistency. And that's something that's really good when we get into the dye application. 
because it really allows the shirt or whatever material for that matter to absorb as much of that dye as possible and get deeper full saturation of color and so right here this is what you want it to look like when you are completed with it that's the mandala right there and it's in eight equal sections as well and so let's get into the hourglass spine now and so for the hourglass spine we move on from the first part of the shirt and we get to the back section of the mirror fold and you want to go ahead and you want to join the top and the bottom of the shirt and you want to join the middle sections so we're just going to fold the remaining half in half right there like I just did here and then we are going to get a washable marker you can eyeball it once you get a little bit more comfortable with it but for now we're just going to use the washable marker and that's going to be a guiding uh, a guiding line and so we just want to follow that line all the way up and that's actually where we're going to put our initial uh, bind and we're going to go again with the floss right here oh no no actually i correct myself we're going to use rubber bands i wanted to show you that it could be done either way and so let's start binding the spine and so right here i put a rubber band on that line where the where you see the black rubber band that's actually where that washable marker line was and then after that you could just go ahead and continue to place rubber bands in as equal increments as possible through the back to the front of the shirt and so wherever you started just work your way in in equal inch increments either half inch one inch one and a half inch and you could also switch it up a little bit and that'll give you a little bit of variation for the type of spine that we're going to try to do here and the reason that we do it this way is that way it will give good consistency and like i said earlier those solid start and stop points are very important and so now we're getting into the trip style sleeves and for the trip style i really like this style it's real easy um very important when you're doing this style for that initial bind again that start and stop point you want to go heavy with it with whatever you're using to bind that way there's a clear separation on the start and stop point that way it just uh it makes it look like very uh controlled abstract art design with the resist dye technique and so again see uh, here we're grabbing up the rest of that shirt and we're just bunching it up in even increments and we keep it tight with that mirror fold that way the finished product will look symmetrical and it'll look even so for whatever we do on one side it'll go to the other as well with this trip style and so you see me here putting rubber bands around the base of it that's the most important part yeah you want to get the rest of it to stay that shape but you really want to have a significant amount of rubber bands around the base because you want a very obvious start and stop point wherever you're going to be using this trip style and i think it comes out really cool that way and hopefully you do too let me know in the comments and so here we're going back over that with sinew and so notice here how i'm going back over that initial start and stop rubber band uh pretty heavy to where uh, wrap it two or three times and then pull it tight and then you might want to do that about two or three sometimes four times depending on how thick you want that uh, separation line to be and so again we're going to go over the rest of the shirt and all the points that we already bind that we had already bound we're going to go back over them with sinew and so you could see that here how i went over it with sinew and that's just going to give it a little bit more uh, firmness and it's going to give a little bit more detail lines and a little bit more uh, abstract shapes to that resist dye technique and so here we go in um i wanted this shirt to be all green that's why we titled it dr green thumb of course uh shout out you know um and so right here we are adding peacock green that's the first uh, color that we went with and next here we are going with a blue green i believe it is and then we wanted to have a good pattern going and so wherever we use one color i try to go throughout the shirt with that color and kind of just start it out with whatever spots i want th to have that color at the end because once we add more colors to this uh, you got to imagine the dye going deeper into the shirt with every layer of 
uh, with every round of die application you're doing, you want you, you're going to want to start thinking in terms like that um, for when you're imagining what you want your shirt to look like. And so we went with, uh, I believe it was lime green, and then we're coming back in with peacock green again. And I believe right here we're going with a dark green. We also utilized neon green. We also utilized light green and what's the other green? Oh, da, 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 da. Well, no, we used peacock green already, so just a lot of different greens. And I got a, I got a punch list uh, towards the end of the video here with all the different ones. Oh yeah, blue green. And we also emerald green. That's the one I forgot. Emerald green. That's what it was. And so just uh, use different variations. You want to go from light to dark when you're using all the same color like this. There's really, you know, it's pretty hard to mess it up. Um, go with your lighter colors first, of course, and then work your way towards your darkest colors. And that will let your darker, your lighter colors, excuse me, absorb into the center folds of the shirt while the darker colors uh, go on top and don't touch the first colors. And so that's just a good method of doing this. And it, it really uh, gets a good finished result towards the end here. And right here, what I'm doing is just going back over, adding some more of those neon greens and light green colors um, as much as possible before I add the uh, dark green. And then black was the only opposite color that we were going to use that's not a green color. And that was to just uh, show emphasis on all of the different color separations of green throughout this tie-dye project. And again, so I believe here I'm going with dark green, not even black yet. And then I let the shirt sit for maybe about an hour or two after I've finished doing all of the green application. And now you can see that the shirt dried a little bit. I'm going to go back over it here with black. And I'm just going to do it wherever I used um, the sinew or the rubber bands. Wherever there's a good bind, that's where I want to put the black. And we're, we do the black last because black is a really strong color uh, when you're dying. And it can very easily overpower a lot of the other shirts. And so if you use it at the same time when your shirt is still really wet and runny, typically it will just oversaturate and it'll go... Uh, deeper and further than you really want it to and so by letting it dry for a few hours uh, in between coats of your color and then black it really allows you to just put the black where you want it to be and it'll sit nicely and it won't oversaturate the shirt and it won't just swamp out the shirt with black dye and so it's a really good color to use it really gives emphasis and it really pops when you use it on the binds how I'm doing here just in between the different colors and I'm kind of going back over some of those trip style nubs and so here we go with the finished product um, here it is okay yeah there it is um, so here we go here's that front piece Mandela the eight fold Mandela and I think it came out pretty cool you could see all the clear separation and notice that uh, the black color there how it's not too overwhelming it's not too overpowering it really just gives an accent and a good break to the different lighter green colors and so if we hadn't used black you'd still be able to see the separation but not as nicely and not as prominent as you do here and so here's that hourglass spine and again you could really see where the color variation stops and starts that's what we wanted to accomplish with those heavy binds at the starting and stopping point. And then really the utilization of black just really made the shirt pop and it really made it look nice and stand out, especially with the trip style all around it. And so for a project recap, I wanted to just go ahead again and show you the folding techniques. I didn't bind this shirt, but I did fold them again just so you can get a better understanding of what it is you're going to be doing and try to see it in your mind's eye a little bit better for next time and so with the fan fold we're doing the mandala fan fold uh eight point fold which is folded into eight equal parts and you just again you fold it into a triangle with the center part being at the wherever you want the middle of your mandala to be and then you just fold it over and then you fold it under in equal increments as you see me doing here and what that does is it leaves a good uh, fan fold of the material. That way when you go to apply the dye and when you go to bind it, it will leave a very cool pattern and it'll make it a lot easier for the dye absorption to take place. 
and so here you can see it there there are those folds from using the over and under technique and so there it is that's how you do the mandela again that's the second time and then right here where where it would be the vines or the rubber bands and so just uh, take mental note of that and if you need to go back over it again and try it out and this is a very good easy efficient technique to try so i hope it works out good for you and again right here we're going to go back over the hourglass spine and so again we take the top and the bottom of the shirt that we're working on or the material that we're working on and we fold those together that way we have the top and the bottom and the middle part on opposite ends and then we lay it down and i i'm not using washable marker here but i am just gonna do it by eye and so just imagine there's a line and then just fold it fan fold it all the way up in equal increments and equal folds and that will give you the look that we're going for with the hourglass spine and so you always want to start at the center point of the shirt or the back and work your way up towards the shoulders which would be the shoulders and the bottom of the shirt and to give you that x hourglass shape and then right there at the bottom where the point is breaking through all the rest of the folds that is where you would bind it so right here and that's how you get the hourglass and so just notice all the folds are equal size and equal shape for the most part i went back over here so you can see that again in slow-mo that way you can have a better understanding of what it is you're trying to aim for and a better understanding and comprehension of what it is that we are accomplishing when we're doing these different a uh, little bit more intricate folds here and so right there where my finger is that would be where you're gonna put your initial bind and remember you always want to go heavy on that one that way th there's a lot of resist for this dyeing technique which is resist dyeing that we're doing here and this is the back side of that shirt just flipped over right here so you can see the top and the bottom of it notice how the folds are pretty much for the most part equal equal shapes and equal size and that's what you want to aim for they don't have to be perfect but just as close as possible uh you know good enough for um city work as they say and so right there was where the bind would be and then you would just continue to add those going inwards towards the end of the shirt and that will give you that hourglass spine that we had accomplished and so right here we're going to do another trip style fold or a trip style bind for the sleeves of the shirt as we did in this project and for that you just want to keep the shirt tight together with that mirror fold and then you just bunch it up how i'm doing here and then put a rubber band or sinew or whatever you're going to use to bind it around the base of that nub wrap it up tight and then wrap up the rest of that nub keep it tight though but not too tight keep it spongy that way the dye absorption could take place but within those folds and that uh, kind of abstract shape there, you'll get a pretty cool smoky finish and it will look really cool as long as you go heavy on that initial bind for the resist dye process to take place. And so right here, I'm going to trip style the rest of the shirt up as I did in this uh, project here. And so just take note of how I'm doing that. Just anything random for the most part, but don't overly spin it inwards, kind of go over and under and wrap it around that way the dye absorption can still take place and all right well that's going to be it for this video we hope that you learned something we hope that you found it interesting and we hope that you enjoyed uh please leave any questions or concerns in the comments and i will respond to them in a timely manner thank you for your time thank you for watching thank you for staying till the end we very much appreciate it uh, get out there and tie-dye the world, and we will see you next time. So thank you again. All right. We love you. Bye-bye.